Hello. Thank you for taking time out of your schedules during this bu busy time of the year to learn more about competitive grant process for the Ralph C. Wilson Junior Legacy Funds at the Community Foundation for Greater Buffalo. Uh, my name is Bazan Lin, and I'm a senior program officer with the Community Foundation for Greater Buffalo. I go by my last name, Lin, so you can all um, you know, remember me as Lin. Um, I have other colleagues who will be co-presenting um, in this information video, um, so I would like to um, you know, ask other members of the Community Foundation team to introduce themselves. Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Hoos and I'm a program officer here at the Community Foundation for Greater Buffalo. Hello, my name is Daisha Clark. I am Project Play Western New York Director here at Community Foundation for Greater Buffalo. The agenda for the next 30 minutes will be um, spending a few minutes on the histor history of the Ralph C. Wilson Junior Legacy Fund. And then we'll uh, next talk about the objectives and the other grant requirements um, for the youth sports timeline and some basics of the application process and the decision criteria. We will then provide contact information for each legacy fund category in case you have any questions or would like to reach out for additional details. The Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Foundation established endowment funds at the Community Foundation for Greater Buffalo to provide a permanent source of support for programs and initiatives and that reflect the personal passions of Mr. Wilson. Endowment funds are designed to grow over time and in order to ensure that they are perpetual, the principle of the funds is not touched. So each year a portion of earnings in these funds will be distributed. 2016 was the first year of distributions from these funds. This year we'll have about 800,000 will be distributed in total from our four funds. I'm now going to quickly go through the overall goal for each of the four funds and then spend the majority of our time talking about the specifics for caregivers, community assets, design and access, and youth sports funds. The goal of the caregiver fund is to support caregivers, whether paid, voluntary, or family of persons who are unable to fully care for themselves and are part of an underserved community. Preference will be given to organizations or projects that provide support for caregivers of older adults. Community assets. This fund will support significant cultural and historic assets and increase access to long-term arts instruction for youth. For the design and access, design and access fund was um, established in 2017. Uh, the fund will increase the health and quality um, of Western New York residents of all ages by enhancing outdoor activities within the region. This fund will give preference to projects that incorporate green design and universal access design. And finally, the youth sports, um, you know, the fund is to provide opportunities for all children to be active through sport. Now I will hand over to my colleague, Jonathan Hughes, to go over the caregivers process in detail. Thank you, Lynn. So the goal for the caregivers process to is to support care caregivers, whether paid, voluntary, or family, of persons who are unable to fully care for themselves and are part of an underserved community. Preference will be given to organizations or projects that provide support to caregivers of older adults. And one of our objectives is to increase opportunities for caregivers to take advantage of resources within their community. Additional criteria for the caregivers process, is these are one-time grants, they're not multi-year. The range is between $10,000 to $25,000. Grants will be given out in the eight counties of Western New York. They can be given to government or nonprofit organizations 501c3s, but not to individuals. The intent is not to replace public funding, but to augment and leverage it. And funding can be used for programming, no scholarships, or capital projects. Organizations can apply to multiple legacy funds as well at the Community Foundation. And also the, sorry, <laughs> organizations can apply to multiple legacy funds as well as the Community Foundation's competitive grant cycle process. Organizations that have received a legacy grant in the past are more than welcome to apply again. 
Next, I'm going to turn it back over to Lynn, who's going to talk more about community assets. Thank you, Jonathan. So the community assets, the main objectives of the community assets um, are to increase long-term art instruction for children and youth living in under-resourced communities, um, and to restore and leverage significant historic buildings and architectural landmarks with a preference for sites that promote cultural tourism. Also note that the focus of the second objective is around the sites that promote tourism. The Community Foundation Competitive Grant Cycle also has a similar objective to community assets strengthen the region as a center for architecture, arts, and culture. The community foundations process has a long time, longer timeline with the decisions being made in late summer. So we'll be making decisions in the late spring, so the timing may be the one point of consideration, but you may apply for both processes. Community assets additional um, criteria um, are, um, are um, I'm sorry. Um, additional criteria for the community assets fund are, these are one-time grants, not multi-year, the grant size will be between 10,000 and 25,000. We will fund organizations located in Erie County only. And that's a very important point. Your organization has to be physically located in the Erie County. Just simply providing a service in Erie County would not be enough. You have to be physically located with the address in the Erie County. Organizations need to be 501c3 nonprofit organizations, and we will fund either capital or programming. Um, and as um, Jonathan said, with the caregivers, you know, organizations can apply for multiple legacy funds as well as to the Community Foundation's competitive grant cycle. But there is a limit of one application per fund per organization for the legacy fund. Past recipients of the legacy fund um, for community assets are also welcome to apply again. Now, I will also discuss about design and access uh, application process. So design and access, the objectives of the design and access um, grant process um, the main objectives of the design and access process are to support for pre-planning, development, and or construction costs. This may include projects related to increasing the walkability, bikeability of local communities and improving waterways, greenways, and recreation corridors. It is a preference but not requirement for that projects to incorporate green designs um, to be environmentally sustainable um, and incorporate universal access design to serve all people of abilities. Additional criteria for the design and access um, process are, there are also one-time grants, not multi-year. Grant requests can be up to 50,000. Funds can be used for planning, pre-planning, programming, or capital. We will fund organizations located in all eight counties of Western New York, but they can either be 501c3 not-for-profit organizations or the government entities. Um, and um, the government entities can be the municipalities, the counties, or the local um, uh, governments. Large sports facilities, unfortunately, are not of the interest. Once again, organizations can apply for multiple legacy funds um, at the same time, but it has to be one grant per category. And past recipients of the legacy funds for design and access are also welcome to apply again. I will now hand over the youth sports session to my colleague, Deja. Thank you, Lynn. Um, so I will go over a couple of details in regards to the youth sport legacy funds. First and foremost, our goals. Our goal is always to support organizations or projects that provide opportunities for all children to be active through sports. Requests to build collaboration among organizations are greatly encouraged. So we definitely want to make sure that we are partnering throughout the region to increase the capacity of all the organizations that are serving youth. Our youth sport grants are all also similarly one-time grants, not multi-year opportunities. The range of grants are typically between 10,000 and 25,000. Our goals are always to engage or re-engage youth in sport and recreation, specifically coming out of COVID-19. I think there are many opportunities to re-engage our youth and we wanna take advantage of that. All of the grants that come through youth sports are hoping to reach through all eight counties. So through every single county in the West New York area, if the organization either is situated or, or planned programming throughout the eight counties, they are encouraged to apply. We are looking to receive applications from nonprofit organizations that have established 501c3 status or governments, specifically municipalities, towns, and local government agencies. 
Organizations can apply to multiple legacy funds as well as the Community Foundation's competitive grant cycle. However, there is a limit of one application specifically for each fund from each organization. Organizations that have previously received the legacy funds are welcome and encouraged to apply again. The objectives when it comes to youth sports are specifically aligned to the State of Play West New York report. First, that you ask kids what they want, incorporating youth voice in the program models, reintroducing free play and allowing opportunities for unstructured play to go and grow throughout your community. Encourage sports sampling and opportunities for you to, to take advantage of traditional and non-traditional sport opportunities. Revitalizing in-town leagues. Think small and create projects that will be established within your community that will be as impactful within its design. Design for development. So when you think small, you also need to take into consideration how we're going to scale that as the years progress. Train all coaches. That's a large part of our investment is making sure that all of the coaches involved in the youth sport landscape are correctly trained as well as in all safety and prevention. So emphasizing pre prevention is our eighth objective that we're really looking to focus on to make sure that all of the youth involved in youth sports have healthy and safe experiences within this. Lastly, one additional that is outside of the state of play is capacity building for youth sport organizations. Project Play West New York is very much committed to increasing the capacity and the reach and impact of all the youth sport organizations that we partner with and invest with. Some considerations when you are preparing your applications. There should be a distinct connection to our 2017 State of Play West New York report. Also a connection to the Project Play West New York initiative, a connection to the Built to Play initiative that has been going on for several years now, and a distinct advancing of the work of the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Youth Sport Initiative. In more detail, this initiative is focused on changing the narrative around youth sport and play to increase participation and retention of kids in youth sports. We welcome grant applications that further the effort to change the youth sport narrative. Youth serving organizations that sincerely want to help to change this narrative on a long-term basis are encouraged to apply for this legacy fund process. Some additional criteria. Funds will not be considered that are requesting traditional sporting goods equipment because there is availability for that through the Good Sport or Victory Sport Global Outreach opportunities. We will be conducting webinars in January to give additional details and we wanna make sure that you are taking advantage of all the funding that is available throughout Western New York. All organizations that apply to youth sport legacy funds will be encouraged and requested to participate in the Race Matters Institute Racial Equity Impact Analysis Training. Please reach out to our staff if you have any questions regarding that training or would like to sign up for any that are coming up in 2022. We encourage requests to support collaboration among youth sport organizations or youth serving organizations. If you reach out to us, we'd be happy to partner and to connect you with any organizations that have aligned interests. When you are preparing your application, please exhibit clear pictures of your programming plan, including relationships that result in increased participation. And we hope that everything shows a sincere commitment to advance the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Youth Sport Initiative. Next, I'll hand off to Lynn to review the timeline for our grant application process. Thank you, Deja. I'm now gonna go over the key dates for the four legacy fund processes. The application process opened online on November 8th, and all applications are coming to due on December 3rd at 4 p.m. That's a sharp drop deadline. Um, you cannot submit any grants after 4 p.m. Um, by late April or early May, all grant uh, applicants will be notified of their grant decisions. Beginning May, grants will be dispersed following the sign-off on grant requirements and obligations. Grant reports are due one year after they receive the grant funding from us. And now I'm going to go over some of the uh, uh, items on application on our application um, website. Um, a few points on the application. 
organizations are limited to one application per funding category. That is, caregiver is one funding category, design and access is one funding category, and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to go over the application process. A few points on the applications. Um, organizations are limited to one application per funding category. Again, it is very important that, for instance, fund um, caregiver is one fund category, design and access is another, and so on and so forth. Um, additionally, organizations are encouraged to apply for the project of the highest priority to the organization. A few logistics around application. Uh, the application is available online. Uh, we will not accept any paper or email application. All applications must be submitted electronically. Um, we utilize Foundin's Grant Cycle Manager, a web-based grant application processing system um, trusted by more than 700 different foundations um, annually. So we've been very happy with the Foundin system and it is very reliable. So please, you know, um, uh, uh, trust the system and then submit through the Foundin um, process. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me directly um, at 716-852-2857, extension 243. Um, a few tips. If you have never applied for a grant through the Community Foundation, you will need to set up a new account. Your walk is saved automatically, so don't worry about not being able to save while you're walking on your application. Pay attention to the carried account, please, and you can write an award document and copy and paste it into the fountain if you prefer. And that's actually a very um, a safe method and a preferable method for um, grant applicants. We ask for basic information at the application, like program name, amount requested, um, which field of fund um, that you are interested in or applying for, um, organizational descriptions, one sentence summary of the request, um, the date the grant is required, history of the prior grants, um, as well as the membership for the charity strong. Additional questions include basic financial information, project descriptions, including the need, how the projects will be uh, will advance the legacy fund objectives, um, how will the project be done, intended outcomes and impacts, sustainability of the project, learnings if it is an existing program, um, and the questions of the budget. Um, some questions on the board members, bios of the personal test stuff uh, will also be asked on the grant on the grant portal. Um, MOUs, letter of support, and program evaluations are optional, but also highly recommended if you have done so. Decision criteria. We will review your application in accordance with identified goals and objectives against the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Legacy Fund's goals and objectives. As we mentioned earlier, we'll review each application to determine the alignment with the Wilson Legacy Fund's goals and objectives. In addition, we'll also consider the need that will be served, project readiness, impacts and outcomes, uh, and how they will be measured, project sustainability, and the ability of the organization to learn. If you have any question regarding any of the Legacy Fund processes, please feel free to reach out to the context listed on this slide. For caregiver process, please reach out to Mr. Jonathan Hughes, who is a Community Foundations Program Officer. For design and access and for community assets, please feel free to reach out to me, I'm Bazan Lin, also another Program Officer at the Community Foundation. And for youth sports, please reach out to Deja Clark, who is the Director of Project Play, as well as the youth sports. Thank you so very much once again, and I hope um, all of you have a fun time applying through our uh, found a system. Have a wonderful day.